everyone, and welcome to another episode of Flex Shop Talks. Today, we're going to be talking about the history of an exciting design partnership, some takeaways we have from working with customers together, what we bring to the table with this partnership, and how cross-industry experience has helped us along the way. I'm Maria Ambrose, Field Applications Engineer at Flex, and I'm joined here with Tom Brown, our head of HMI at Flex, and two very special guests, Bryce Porter and Mike Nellenbach from Techna. Techna is a design and development company that we've been partnering with for a while now to develop state-of-the-art end-to-end solutions for our customers. Today, we're really excited to talk about how this partnership has helped us achieve our mission of creating the extraordinary. So Mike, Bryce, I'll hand it over to you guys to give us an introduction to Techna. Thank you. Uh, as you said, my name is Mike Nellenbach. I'm the Vice President of Product Innovation here at Techna. Uh, industrial designer by training, been in the industry for uh, a little over 20 years now, spent all of that time in product development consulting. Bryce Porter here. I also work at Techna, obviously, and I am design manager. Been at Techna for about 10 years. I'm an, an industrial designer by training also. I do a lot of business development and account management as well. And I like to focus on, I'll call it the fuzzy front end of research and development and really set our clients up for success uh, as they're looking to do new exciting things together. Cool. Well, thank you guys. We really appreciate you being here. So I think we'll start off with that idea of creating the extraordinary and kind of explore that. Um, so we've worked together previously, as I mentioned, on some of these extraordinary products. Um, so I think the first topic I'd like to address is just start from the very beginning, talk about how we met, how Flex got to know Techna and vice versa. So could you give us a little bit of history on the relationship? Yeah, I think we actually met accidentally. Um, I think everybody's generally uh, aware of Flex, um, a great company, uh, amazing capabilities, but we, we kind of bumped into each other through a mutual um, coding process. So Techno was brought in on RFP. It was a design focused program for uh, a customer in the um, appliance industry. Um, the RFP process was very, um, I would say, normal for us. Customer had a design problem. We came in and started to help them scope the program, and it was very design-centric, as many of our programs were. As we go through the process, we're naturally starting to connect the dots of, okay, perfect fit for our experience and, and our design uh, staff here. But um, the things that you're mentioning in your, your program, you you know, you really need to start considering who your contract manufacturing partner is going to be. Um, there's only so much that Techna can do from a design standpoint, but if we're not working very closely with those, you know, contract manufacturers, um, you know, we're never going to achieve your, your business objectives. And that's something that we really take seriously, working with a customer to kind of frame a program and, and achieve their business metrics. So um, they took a little bit of break and they came back and they said, okay, we got a new plan. We're going to um, have you take on a little design sprint, and then we're going to um, have you competitively work with these, these other uh, contract manufacturers to quote the project. And so put a, an interesting little twist on it. Um, and I, I think it worked very well from there, you know, being paired with the, with the client, with our design team, with Flex at that time to really help shape the design and the direction of the program. Um, you know, industrial designers are crazy talented and creative, but we can get off the rails quickly, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, achieving an aesthetic that, um, you know, is, is, can be manufactured in a cost effective way. So flex was great um, through that process, jumping on phone calls, collaboratively working through design challenges, um, being able to, you know, quote and kind of suggest things on the fly. And we really love that input early um, to um, bring that innovation to projects from, you know, napkin sketch all the way through, you know, CAD model and detail development. So it definitely could have been done better. And I think that's what, you know, following that program, we really teamed up after the fact saying, you know, we, we think if we work together more closely that we can offer our clients a more holistic um, uh, solution. Yeah, there's a couple of things in there that I think are, are worth hammering on. So one of them is the design process. You know, we work with many industrial design shops in the past. Uh, some designs defy the, uh, the laws of gravity. Um, you know, others are beautiful, but they really become difficult to manufacture at scale. 
And so that's one of the things we really enjoyed about uh, the Techna team is they actually kept a, a firm eye on the aesthetics as well as how things roll into production. Can we develop this beautiful product at a cost-effective manner for the customer? The other is getting involved early. Uh, so you mentioned, you know, getting Flex involved early in those initial designs. You know, there's a number of ways the architecture can take you from a component standpoint, from a manufacturing process standpoint. And so getting Flex involved early to say, hey, Flex, if we pursue this path, you know, what price does that look like? If we pursue that path, what does this price look like? And so, yep. you know, I thought it was a great relationship, being able to kind of move along and, and figure out, you know, what's the most optimal path to get the customer to their target price. Yeah, I just want to kind of build off of that. Um, you know, it's not that hard to get the customer excited about the possibilities, you know, show them some great design solutions. Um, you can get them excited relatively quickly and that will drive some, some concises, uh, consensus and direction in the program. What we really hate is the customer falling in love with a direction that we can't execute. And so you start to backpedal from there, right? You know, you, you got marketing on board, you got R&D aligned, you got leadership aligned on the vision, and then it becomes a series of backpedaling once you start to build in all those other inputs, you know, cost, technology, uh, and whatnot. So, you know, we really think that design should get better as it moves towards a manufactured state, not watered down. And that's the real value that I think we bring together is bringing in the uh, the technology enablement, the vision for cost-effective manufacturing with a great design aesthetic ultimately is going to get the, the um, our end customer a better result quicker and, and help uplift, uplift their brand. Probably worth noting too that Techna also manufactures product and has been doing that for over 30 years. Certainly not to the scale that the Flex crew is doing, but we bring that, you know, that pragmatic and practical approach with design along for the ride. So we know what it takes to, you know, deliver product and then also have to stand behind it from a quality standpoint because we're doing that every day. And that definitely gives you a unique perspective in terms of the manufacturability. You know, Mike, another item you mentioned is, uh, you know, helping the customer along, you know, getting that industrial design solidified. Because it's not uh, something that's set in stone. It requires taking the customer along with that vision that you incrementally provide them. So I think you guys do a great job in helping them understand what exactly they're looking for and, and talking with all those stakeholders. You know, getting all their buy-in early prevents uh, kind of retooling down the line when someone wants to move this button there or add this lighting element there. Having all those things kind of solidified just eases the process through design and also manufacturing so not having to go back and redo anything. Exactly. Such great points about just how we can be so innovative and work together from the beginning and make something that can actually be built instead of just this great idea that ends up kind of, I don't know, dwindling down into something not nearly as exciting. And when we work together, I mean, we've had these sessions where Flex, we've come with Techna and talked about our technology building blocks and how those could work in a design. So then when we go in with a customer, um, I've seen these amazing inspirations and designs from Techna that use our technology building blocks. So from the very beginning, we're getting the customer excited about a solution that we have the supply chain and the manufacturing capabilities to really execute on. You know, I think that early call it research and design and development, those phases you're in with those customers is an, a learning opportunity. I mean, we have to collect stakeholder input through that process. We're still getting to know who these customers are, how they tick, how they make decisions, right? How they develop a, a system or a solution is it, it's, it's never the same from one to the next. Obviously there's themes and trends in there, but you know, you really want to start to embed yourself in their organization, understand what their business goals are and start to, you know, think like them, but also you bring a fresh outside perspective that helps them do new and fresh things, right? That that's really the goal. And I think those conversations we encounter those week after week. You know, so many people, so many organizations are trying to do what's new and different to them. Maybe they've been developing the same solutions for the last, you know, 50 years and they want to now step into smarter, you know, more sophisticated and tailored experiences. And it takes a team to do that. Yeah, we certainly feel those pressures uh, from our customers, uh, you know, getting faster, more cost-effective, adding new features. 
I mean, our customers are facing pressures from non-traditional hardware vendors, software companies that are looking to move into the hardware space to deliver their software more widely. Maybe hardware companies from other spaces looking to increase market share or branch into a new market. Uh, so they're facing all those pressures and in turn, we're both facing pressures on top of us to, uh, to help them innovate more quickly. Absolutely, especially with uh, customers that typically aren't in the digitized IoT space and are feeling that pressure from the market to put out products um, that are smarter. What are some observations you've made, maybe some challenges um, with some customers trying to get into that space and wanting to get to market as quickly as possible? A great question and something that we've been seeing a lot of for a long time. It's just, this isn't just something that's happened over the last couple of years, but um, I'd say in true traditional product development, you know, 10 years ago, it was, it was pretty easy to, to scope a project and it was the, the nuts and bolts of mechanical engineering and design coming together. I'd say the last, you know, three plus years, every project that walks through, I'd say both of our doors has a product, has a service, has a, a need to connect to other products, cloud, every single project. And the need is out in the marketplace and you have a lot of durable good OEMs trying to, to get on that train and take advantage of all the different ways that they can connect with their end customers. Um, so a lot of programs come through the door with the same sets of needs. I wanna collect data, I wanted to go to a cloud, I wanna manage you know, information that I'm gleaning off of my connected products and I wanna be able to provide that value back to our customers. And some of them don't have that expertise. They wanna do it, they wanna get into, um, into that space, but they're not quite sure how to start. Um, so that's where a partnership with Flex is really beneficial because you know, we can kind of bring in and frame in the strategy, but you guys bring all of those building blocks to help them get there much quicker. Yeah, we, we face so many different customers coming to us with a, a wide range of needs. So with the technology building blocks, we're trying to find common denominators that we can enable our teams uh, as well as people like Techna to put these things together quickly, has the supply chain built in, the manufacturing process is already built in, so things can kind of flow smoothly once we get the project set. Uh, so having that all ready and supporting things like connectivity, the sensors, the computing, you know, some of the base firmware already established, so we're not doing everything from the ground up, really helps our customers, you know, compete in those new market areas that they're trying to go into, or have some of those de facto features that have pretty much become, you know, table stakes in order to compete. Yeah, great point. I'm going to pile on to that. I mean, you know, the IoT space is really immature. You know, you could call it the Wild West as far as experiences go. You've got the largest and the smallest companies kind of going toe to toe to earn real estate in those spaces. The big boys, they want to think like a startup and act like a startup, right? But they're going to drag their, their big company challenges and, and processes into that that maybe aren't ready to manage you know, developing an IoT system or, or an ecosystem of products and an experience. So they definitely need partners and they need those robust, reliable technology blocks that have been proven that Flex can bring. I think if you start to marry those things together, you know, and it's not willy nilly, it's in a strategic way to Mike's roadmap point um, to help you kind of logically step to your goals. You know, ultimately every one of these folks is trying to probably roll out a new, call it customer experience, and they're trying to copy people to the left and the right, and they don't even know how those are going to be perceived necessarily when they hit the marketplace. And I think, you know, working together, we can help kind of walk down that path with them with, you know, experienced teams and proven technologies to get there. You know, with all the capability we bring into the, uh, to the customers, you know, many of them can feel threatened if they have an existing engineering team or a supply chain team, if they have a manufacturing team, uh, they can feel threatened with, uh, you know, the breadth of what Technoflex are bringing. Um, but I think the, the better way to look at it is how we can augment what they lack. You know, if one of the things they're lacking is that early stage design, we can absolutely work on that together. If one of the things they're struggling with is hitting cost targets on their product, we can work the supply chain, we can bring in you know, some of the, uh, our tooling experts to take a look at working on some of the plastics, how do we reduce down wall thickness or overall resins, et cetera. So those are all things that people should look at instead of, you know, 
they're just going to carte blanche take over everything. It's how do we work together to produce the best product? You know, we're not a product company. You know, we're, we're not sitting here every day thinking about, you know, how can we manufacture the, the best oven, for instance, to, to take the market? It's more so more granular than that. Our customers are the experts in their market. They're the experts in their product and we augment them uh, where needed to, to get their, their product uh, more competitive versus others. Exactly, Tom. I mean, something that we really like to tell our customers and really emphasize is that this is your product. You own the product and um, especially at a lot of big companies where they have so much market research and knowledge about their end users, we're never going to be able to, to overtake that. You know, you're the expert in the industry and, um, you know, the, the customers we work with, they know exactly what their consumers are looking for, what the end users want. And we just want to be there to help with the innovation, maybe that outside perspective, um, those technical aspects. And, and just as you said, just chime in and augment where they're lacking, but, you know, not step on any toes. And we're happy to take whatever role we need. And that's why we mentioned that our engagement model, Flex, Technet, and the customer varies so much with each customer. We completely redo that uh, roles and responsibilities every time that we engage, just so that we make it um, adjusted for what the customer's needs are. I like to say we turbocharge what they do. Um, it doesn't mean we don't learn from them, right? And as Techna is really kind of a B2B uh, service provider, you know, at, our, at, our, at a core, we, if we do our job right, you know, like Tom is saying, we're going to teach them some things. Maybe it's skills, maybe it's a new process. Ultimately, they'll likely invest in those things themselves. And, and for Techno, oftentimes that means they hire people that do internally what we do for them. And, and that's okay. That's the natural kind of arc of a relationship, a successful relationship with a good customer, I think. One thing I think it's important to hit on as well in terms of customer observations and trends that we see is the continued pressure to deliver more product in a in shorter amounts of time. And there's this uh, ongoing lack of resources within a larger organization's R&D department. So the organization is putting pressure to deliver more products under constrained resources. And I think there's a real fear at times that, you know, a partnership like this could go around the system and kind of cut out those key internal stakeholders. And what we have to do is kind of bring that back and say, you know, we, we need you involved in the program. It's part of that, that learning process, that um, three-way partnership. So the way that we would recommend structuring those programs is to put key technical leadership in place from the customer standpoint. Maybe it's a product manager, maybe it's a technical lead, maybe it's a director of UX, Maybe it's um, someone from procurement or sourcing that can be part of that internal core team so that if we're going through a, a research and ideation project together, they're learning along the way. That knowledge is being built internally and they're, being, they're able to carry that on to the next generation program. So it's really important for us to run these programs that have good internal leadership at the customer level so that they can build that internal knowledge put it into the next generation programs and they can feel like they're, they're leading that direction. Where we pick that up from can come from any point. An internal industrial design team can come up with, you know, the concept and Techno and Flex can kind of you know, run that home per se with their leadership involved. So it's very important that we work collaborative, collaboratively together on those programs. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about what the partnership between Flex and Techno looks like in practice. Could you walk us through what it looks like when a customer wants to engage with us in their product development and any obstacles that they may face when getting that physical product to market? No, well, there's there's kind of common scenarios and we're we're scratching at those with the previous conversation, but you know, you typically have an organization that they may have a partial strategy in hand and they have an opportunity area identified either within their portfolio or just adjacent to that, that they want to go after. You know, their core teams are going to be focused on managing their bread and butter, and they're going to be looking to reach a little further. So they oftentimes will have a stakeholder that is brand new to their organization that they hired from somewhere else who knows IoT or knows connected devices. 
and they're going to bring some level of relationships and experience to the table. And they have all kinds of uh, great customer knowledge. Usually there's a ton of research done about like what this space could mean for them. Um, and they have cost targets already in mind, right? And they, but they still don't have the design requirements locked down, right? This is very common. They're kind of feeling us out in, in you know, flex and techna included. Like, what is it going to take to do this thing? And where do you see our biggest hurdles as, as kind of an outside partner? What do you bring to help us fill those gaps? And oh, by the way, what does it cost? Can you tell us now what you think it's going to cost? And that's usually how those conversations start. And, and I think we try to, as quickly as possible, you know, get the parties in the room that need to do the development work. So, you know, you, you need your, your, your design and engineering partner there if they're not internal resources. You need your supply-based partners and your, your manufacturing partners there like Flex right away to help you kind of already start to avoid potholes and set it up for success. And you need the software partners there as well. Um, and, and I think the sooner you can get that conversation very specific about roles and responsibility and overlap, you can start to create a pretty logical map and plan for those relationships to start to roll out. And of course, you need a timeline and all the things associated with that. But I think, you know, and that can take weeks and sometimes months to facilitate those conversations before, you know, the project even really kicks off. Um, just to start it. And then once you're, you're working within that group, you're, you're typically, tech is oftentimes positioned to kind of project manage early in the front end as far as we play traffic cop and we're interfacing with the key product management um, group that's internal to the client with some expertise. And then we might be interfacing with Flex, right? Right away, we're going to be leaning on your experiences, not only from an advanced sourcing standpoint, but even from a design and production engineering standpoint, you know, to make sure we're hitting quality targets or at least moving in the right direction early on. And, and, and that's really where I think you guys come in and step more heavily in. And we, we don't necessarily hand off a baton because we will stay with that program all the way through to launch, but then your team's gonna come in and start to really pick it up and own the project management role and start to really industrialize this system, whatever it may be. Maybe that's too high level, but that, that's kind of how I'm thinking about every engagement, right? Is if we can get them to that point of belief in, in what this thing is and everybody's pointing at the same thing and charging up the same side of the mountain together, we, we're gonna get there. Those early stages are really difficult in projects, getting everyone over the hump, understanding the design, getting things working. Uh, but one area that I think Flex does a great job is keeping the, the long-term vision. The long-term vision is getting this product out to market at a cost-effective manner, getting it successful. You know, in terms of Flex and the customer relationship, we're really aligned with the customer's success. You know, if the customer only rolls 50% of the target volume, it's a big loss for us. So we're really aligned with the customer being very successful in the market. And we act as almost like a, a general contractor along the way. You know, tech is taking their early stage design, helping develop the vision, working with Flex in the background to make sure that vision is something that can scale. But as you finish the design, we're starting to roll into MPI and getting all the, the factories set up. You know, some of those things like the design for, you know, X, uh, things like designing for costs, designing for even things like a noise suppression, you know, if a device needs to be uh, more, more silent in its operating environment. Things like that are elements that will bring in perhaps later stage uh, that are just minor tweaks to design in order to get it to that final point of uh, hitting the, the, right, the right notes. I think I would add to that too, you guys, I mean, you're pretty flexible, pun intended, as far as an adaptable is receiving the deliverables out of those early phases of what you guys could take and actually turn around and, and commercialize, which I think that's a differentiator for folks because you know not everybody can hit the same targets potentially that you know a, a traditional call it you know OEM partner is going to need to to launch something successfully. Yeah, and I appreciate having that uh, that engagement early on because you know it's one thing to have a, a gradual handoff; it's another thing to just take the design and throw it over the wall and here you go, flex. You know, one example of that, we had a customer who did all the design internally uh, as a, a device that had many, many sensors on it. 
Uh, and so they came to us pretty much when they wanted to scale. They were done with the design as far as they thought. They throw it over the fence to us, say, hey, Flex, it's too expensive. Pull cost out of this thing. And so we, we take a look and we found a way to reduce the overall bill of materials by 20%, a huge number. Uh, so we go back and propose this and the customer's like, well, we don't have the time for that. We've already got our, our, our scheduling. We've already got our budget set. We can't go all the way back to EVT, redo mechanicals, redo firmware, redo our boards. We need to launch. And so things like that are why we need why'd, to do it early. I think it's yeah. why'd you design it that way? <laughs> when we talk about cross industry experience and capabilities, I think a point that I wanted to make was that we see so many different customers um, doing completely different products, and that's on a regular. We're juggling many of those, and then Techna has the same a similar experience where they're working with so many different customers making different products. So. When we're working together with this partnership, that just doubles the amount of cross industry experience that we can bring and all of the different product types that we see and then take that experience and bring that to our customer. Um, I think it's really cool that we can have so much knowledge sharing between the companies and what we've seen and how, how many things we see on just a regular basis and how we can take those capabilities and those features and designs and use the really awesome parts of those for our new customers. And I think it's interesting, Bryce, you mentioned how Techno will typically be in that front end from the concept phase when they haven't even fully, the customer hasn't fully even decided their product requirements and then flex that commercialization um, once we want to get that product built and out to market. But through that flow, there's just, there's overlapping responsibilities on either end. So flex will be in there in the beginning as well as, um, kind of someone to bounce your ideas off of, make sure that um, we're all on board with the direction. And then Techna as well will be in there um, on the end as well as a consultant. So while it's a little bit heavier on Techna in the beginning, a little bit heavier on Flex at the end, it's really just a sharing of responsibilities throughout the whole thing and having an open and honest conversation about who's going to do this specific capability or this specific item the best and putting that team there. So it's like every single item is just really being done by the team that's going to be state of the art to give it an overall state of the art solution. Absolutely. And they're all different. You know, we, we kind of have yeah. to put that together on every project on, you know, who's your A team on what and what responsibilities and, and uh, roles can we share? And each one we, we almost, that's part of the project. It has to be designed on how do we execute that based on the project, the type, the scope. Um, but again, I think it, it's, uh, if you do it well, um, you can avoid the things that Thomas brought up in terms of, you know, receiving that design that, you know, you're trying to execute and you can't, you can't hit the customer's cost targets. So that's why it's so critical that you play a, a big role up front. I think they're all different too. I, you know, as, as Maria and you and Mike are talking, I'm also thinking about, the scaling activity that happens as you're nearing and, and post launch, right? Like not every one of these opportunities because they're newish to organizations or they're newish to markets maybe that are immature to this organization are gonna come out of the gate at a million units in year one, right? So, so I think we also get creative together to help folks scale appropriately based on their business goals and their needs to be successful. Right. And, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of organizations, in my experience, have, they either undercut the value of that collaboration work to do that scaling activity, or they just don't invest enough in, in that to begin with, because it is so valuable to the success of a long term, you know, call it IoT solution to be able to scale that to a broader audience and then be able to service it beyond that, right? There's software updates and all types of things that have to happen as a service provider of intelligent products. So, you know, most folks aren't just not ready for that or typically not fully planning for it. And the scaling out of a manufacturing program is one of the things that really requires that open line of communication between us and the customer you know, what really is your plan? Do you really want to have absolute lowest cost? Do you only need X number of units? You know, maybe we launch you out of China. And then as you get more success and need more regionalized approach, then we launch a node in Europe, we launch a node in say Mexico or something like that. 
So understanding where things go really helps us figure out what that manufacturing strategy will be because today is, is a lot more complex than it was five years ago. Uh, so being able to, to shift our, our footprint around uh, to meet the needs is, is super important to have that open conversation early on. One of the things I love about what Techna does is, as Maria said, the number of projects and clients in different industries that we have to solve for. And you, you come in and you learn so much about a customer's business, the products that they sell. Um, and that's the exciting part about you know, what we do. The, the unifying factor in all those projects is people. And so it doesn't matter if you're solving for a brain surgeon or someone who um, is an HVAC installer or someone who has a pet at home. They're all people. They're, they all are motivated by similar things. And it's us trying to figure out what those motivations are and how you solve for them. Um, and more and more complex, complexity is being driven into those user experiences. So we like to say, you know, our experience in the operating room and in the healthcare setting has really helped train us early on to understand complex workflows. When you're designing for, you know, an orthopedic uh, knee implant, there's no more complex user experience than that. Now you can take that experience and dumb it down to a barbecue grill and say, okay, there's, we can, we can do that. Um, but it's all about understanding people, understanding their motivations. Um, now we're connecting technologies and appliances and things are coming to get together in a more meaningful way. That's, you know, again, one of the most exciting things that we're doing, but um, I love the cross pollination of ideas. It's, it's always about that inspiration early on in those programs that gives you a competitive advantage. Customer comes to you with a, a problem. You already have tons of knowledge from other things, cutting edge technologies, trends, materials, processes that you're bringing to their uh, program. And a lot of times customers come to us and they, they forget how unique and special their product really is. And we come to it with a certain sense of passion, again, bringing in all these things that we see going on in the world and make them realize how cool their product really is and say, well, it doesn't have to be like that. It could be like this. And, and very quickly talking about you bring this technology in, you could integrate your display, you could make it easier to clean. All of these things just with a certain sense of passion and excitement while kind of bringing in all of the things that we're learning in other projects, um, which I think is, again, just such a, it's the fun part of what we do. The consumer or the end user too, I think they're just, you know, in every market, they're, they're more sophisticated, right? And their expectations are higher now from a, a sort of solution or product standpoint. And I think, you know, Maria's points about breadth and depth of experience be able to connect those dots back to maybe Tom's industrial partner, right? Like that those are relevant trends and things that are happening and maybe what seems like a completely unrelated field, but actually, you know, those themes are strong and they will resonate with folks. And I think that also helps, you know, I, I, I think along the way, everybody always wants to do customer validation, right? And check that out. And certainly, that, that work should be done. But I think when you have experienced groups of people working together that can bring kind of that diversity to the table, um, you can be very effective and efficient. So I wanna kind of summarize this whole session talking about the holy grail of design, development, and manufacturing. So when we have the customer, Flex, and Techna together, we really span this entire um, development process end to end. And um, we just have so much experience in that realm. You know, are there any closing thoughts um, before we wrap it up um, from Tom, Bryce, or Mike um, about how this partnership has gone so far, what you're excited uh, to see in the partnership in the future, and what you're hoping um, customers will come to us with and how we can support them? I, I'll take a swing first. So when I think about the Holy Grail and you say that, I think about the actual end user hugging me in customer validation research, right? I think about that moment of like what we're doing together with someone matters to people, right? To Mike's point, it's about people. And, and to me, that's huge. And that can also happen with the actual client or customer, right? Where you develop such a strong connection and bond with them 
through these programs, which are typically long, that they take that with them no matter where they go in life, right? And those relationships and those human connections for me, they kind of represent the holy grail of what we do from a design and development standpoint. Yeah, for me, the most challenging customers are those which uh, are maybe led from a product manager coming into the project where they don't already have a design. They're mostly looking at from the experiential standpoint. So having the ability to kind of interface with the customer at that super early stage, get them to bought into a vision for their product, get them to understand what experience they want, getting that solidified and flowing that through manufacturing as smoothly as possible, that's the holy grail. You know, when things are, are constantly shifting around, it creates a lot of issues, a lot of cost in getting to production. Uh, so being able to just get to that uh, point and getting the customer successful, for me, that, that's a, just a huge win. I echo all of those. I think the thing I would add to it is um, building that trust in the relationship and the partnership across all three of those vectors is huge. And if we can kind of strip down you know, our own business objectives and come together in a true partnership, really listening and solving you know, our customers' challenges, helping them grow their business, I think we can do some really, really amazing work together. And that just that working collaboration and, and that that trust and respect that we all have for each other is is a reward in and of itself. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much, guys. I've it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Flex Shop Talks. And um, I've been loving the partnership so far. It has been just so exciting to see the innovations that you've come to us with. Um, when we go to customers and I'm so looking forward to um, future customer engagements, uh, bringing this partnership forward. So um, thank you again. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them um, in the comments under the video and uh, we'll see you next time on Flex Talk. Bye everyone. Bye.